What I remember most about the 64 campaign was the 64 Civil Rights Act. My dad had been a Republican all his life. And in 64, he switched. And he voted for Johnson, and he became a Democrat because Goldwater was against the 64 Civil Rights Act. Are you concerned, perhaps, about the Democrats taking advantage of this? After Lyndon Johnson, the biggest faker in the United States, having opposed the Civil Rights Act for all the years of his life, this is the phoniest individual that ever came around. Did you get that? <clears throat> Lyndon Johnson, a Southern senator who'd long been ambivalent about civil rights legislation, made big efforts to complete an agenda that Kennedy had not been able to complete. My fellow Americans, I am about to sign into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I want to take this occasion to talk to you. The 1954 Supreme Court decision against segregation in public schools sent a signal to black Americans that the highest court in the land had given the seal of approval to what we were fighting for, for racial integration. Well, with the schools, there was a 10-year period when the country didn't follow through on it. You have said, I believe, that we have no right to tell the southern states what they must do about school integration. I can't understand this statement. Um, do you mean to say the Supreme Court decision is null and void? No, it, the Supreme Court decision is not necessarily the law of the land. The Constitution still is. We, they, they interpreted by that action that it was wrong to have segregation. Now, they didn't spell out what was to be done. Conservatives did not feel that uh, it was something that the federal government should legislate on. What the president has proposed in this bill is a law which will eliminate one of the most embittering forms of racial discrimination, the denial of free access to places of public accommodation, restaurants, stores, hotels, lunch counters, and other establishments of service or amusement. I will never vote for a public accommodations clause in any civil rights bill because I think it's unconstitutional. I think it tampers with the rights of assembly, the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the freedom of property. In my home state, we have very few public places that remain segregated by pointing out to business people that it is morally wrong to practice discrimination, and it's also economically bad. This type of approach, while I know it's time consuming, it is having its effect, will have its effect, and I think it will achieve what we want. Well, like what year? In 1967, in 1979, in 1983? Is it okay during the intervening times that a black kid in a high school baseball team can't stay at a motel? This is the basic disagreement between the Negro community and Senator Goldwater. They don't think he's prejudiced. They don't think he's a racist. I don't think he's a racist. But they can't go along with a man who says we ought to let what's going on in Mississippi be settled by Mississippi. And the federal government ought to knit or do something else. This we can't take. On the eve of the convention, 40,000 people, half of them Negroes, demonstrate against Goldwater in the largest civil rights demonstration since the March on Washington last summer. I am compelled to urge uh, Negroes and all people of goodwill to vote against him. His election would be a tragedy and certainly suicidal almost for the nation and the world. You know, nobody knows, or none of us knew, what Senator Goldwater's motives were. We had to take him at his word that this was a constitutional, a philosophical objection. Um, people respected that, that there could be a difference of opinion. But he was wrong. He was just plain wrong. And because he was wrong, he made his party wrong. And he made the Democrats right.